For anyone who's seen my Felix Stowe Fire Demon video, you will have at least heard of entities appearing engulfed in flames. In the Felix Stowe case, the entity appeared to be some type of alien being, possibly a gray encased in a suit of fire. Interestingly, there have been other fiery entities cited by people over the years. In the late 1800s, there were two cases which actually came to light, one of which was reported in the July 30th, 1891 edition of the Los Angeles Times. It involved more than 50 witnesses. The other case appeared in the September 18th, 1888 edition of the St. Louis Dispatch and has been referenced in various books detailing mysterious events around Illinois. As far as I know, neither case has been sufficiently explained. In 1891, a number of farmers in Burbank, California were frightened by the appearance of a strange fiery entity. As I said, this incident, which occurred over several weeks, was featured in the July 30th, 1891 edition of the Los Angeles Times. According to the article, this entity had actually been encountered some two years earlier, in 1889, on the San Fernando Road. A witness, a farmer named Fisher, as well as numerous other people, claimed they observed a fiery entity. Sightings of this mysterious entity continued, eventually coming to a head in the month of July 1891, when residents in Burbank began sighting a strange winged flying being that appeared to be engulfed in flames. The incidents were said to have occurred on the hottest nights. On the night of July 25, 1891, the entity was cited by more than 50 witnesses, including, and most notably, a farmer traveling on a road in Burbank. I will quote directly from the newspaper article. It rose up in the center of the road a few miles to the other side of Burbank, in front of a farmer who was driving home. His horses were so badly frightened that they could not be induced to move for some minutes. Then the driver found it impossible to keep them in the road. Witnesses describe the being as an immense fiery ball about the size of a two bushel basket and with bat like wings. When first seen it seemed to be struggling to get out of the earth almost under the horse's feet and as soon as it freed itself from the dust and barred earth it rose gracefully and sailed around the wagon several times coming within a few inches of the farmer's head several times. The driver claimed that he did not feel any heat despite the entity's close proximity, although he is unsure if his lack of awareness was due to the fact that he was so frightened. The farmer claimed that the entity appeared to be examining him and his wagon, swooping in and out before eventually flying off towards a railroad track, where he watched as it danced along the top of the coaches of a passing train. The entity went down the full length of the train before it began coming back in his direction. When it reached a point a few feet ahead of the farmer's team, it seemed to fold its immense wings, double itself up, and roll along the road. It moved back and forth along the road until it became weary, when it again rose and made off for some houses nearby. The farmer claimed that the entity played around on the roofs of the houses for some time before rising up several hundred feet into the air, flying off in the direction of some nearby mountains. At some point, he lost sight of it, some 50 other witnesses would come forward claiming that they too had sighted the strange fiery humanoid being that night. The article noted, The people who saw it say it was the most wonderful sight they ever looked upon. It is brighter than electricity and moves at a much slower pace than chain lightning or the fireballs that frequently rise from the swamps. The author of the article thought it strange that the sightings frequently occurred during the hottest nights and believed that the fiery spook of Burbank may have been some type of weird electrical phenomenon. In 1885, just four years before the Burbank fire being was first spotted, another fiery entity was terrifying people on the tiny island near Hardin, a small town between the Mississippi and Illinois rivers. This entity came to be known as the fiery phantom of Diamond Island. The account appeared in the September 18, 1888 edition of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. It began with two young men who were fishing along the river one night in 1885. It was just past midnight when they observed a weird ball of light moving along the island. At some point, to their great shock, this ball of light shot through the trees and flew up in the air where it hovered ominously in the sky above them. As the two boys watched, 
Something very disturbing began to take shape inside the ball of light. It looked like a face. They ran home and immediately woke their parents to tell them about what they had seen. Not surprisingly, most people in the small town heard about the bizarre encounter. Most dismissed it as a natural phenomenon, possibly ball lightning, or the product of an overactive imagination. Things would begin to turn a corner, however, when other people, some of utmost respectability, began to cite the bizarre object. It was about the size of a barrel, and there were definite features in it, said one local businessman. I could see the shape of something fuzzy inside the fire. In September 1888, a group of skeptical locals gathered for an all-night phantom hunt. Armed with guns, knives, pitchforks, and clubs, they quietly rode out to Diamond Island and waited. As they believed that the entire thing was merely a hoax or a prank being pulled on them, they intended on confronting the perpetrators once and for all and putting a stop to it. The men quietly stepped onto the island and hid their boats amongst the weeds. The men spread out and hid along the trees and the shrubs. If the perpetrators were on the island, the last thing they wanted to do was alert them to their presence. As the men sat waiting for something to happen, things would take a weird turn. What happened next, what the men on that island observed, has been debated over and over by various paranormal researchers and skeptics. According to the witnesses, out of nowhere the darkness of the night was replaced by a bright light. The entire side of the island, where they had been hiding, was suddenly bathed in a glowing red-orange light. Just then, the men watched as an inexplicable ball of flame rose out of the trees, swooped into the air, and then came to a stop above them. It hung above them as if watching them. Unaware of what was going on, the men became terrified. Their screeches of fear rang out over the water. Some of the men raised their weapons and began to fire upon it. It appeared to have no effect. To their horror, the object began to move closer to them. One of the men shouted for them to run, and they did. They made a mad dash for their boats. At this point, the strange ball of light arced into the sky at the distance of about 40 yards and then landed inside the closest skiff. The boat plunged backward into the river and drifted away from the island. From the shore, the men watched as an even stranger thing began to unfold in front of their eyes. The crimson ball of light, now inside one of the boats, began to take on a form. It began to transform into the shape of what looked like a small old man, one wearing denim coveralls and a wide-rimmed slouch hat. The hat seemed to cover his facial features. A peculiar light illuminated the boat and the waters around it, making the craft and its mysterious occupant perfectly discernible to the party on the shore, who stood paralyzed with fear, unable to speak or move their eyes riveted by some mysterious influence they could not resist on the spectral object before them. The being simply stood in the boat for a few minutes as it floated out onto the river. He also seemed to perform a few long and steady strokes with the oars. Not unlike Johnny Storm from the Fantastic Four, this entity seemed to reignite himself, becoming a fiery ball of light. Then it slowly began to move upward, and when it was about parallel with the tops of the trees on the island, it disappeared. In the next instant, the watchers looking across the river saw nothing but the flickering lights and hardened. The men were absolutely terrified and trembling. They could not comprehend what they had seen. Some fell to their knees in prayer while others frantically called for help. The cries of the crowd on the island awakened a sleeping fisherman on the opposite side of the river who got up to investigate. He pulled across and rescued the men off the island. When he arrived, he found them in a state of shock. Apparently, one of their boats was still on the shore, but they were too scared to board it. One of the men was almost inconsolable. They were just too frightened. One of the boys had to be carried on and off my rowboat, the rescuer told the post-dispatch. Post-dispatch seemed to suggest that the island had played host to a bizarre murder at one point. To the superstitious, the paper notes, the crimson object is believed to be a restless spirit of this slain man. According to author Troy Taylor, in his book, The Big Book of Illinois Ghost Stories, he claimed that the sightings of the mysterious flying fire entity continued for several months before finally ceasing without explanation. The fiery phantom of Diamond Island has never been heard from again. I guess it's just a strange coincidence that less than one year later, a flying fiery entity arrived to terrify people in California. 
Paul Dale Roberts also investigated a mysterious flying human-looking entity engulfed in flames sighted in the Black Forest in Germany. Roberts nicknamed him the Human Torch of the Black Forest. Okay, I, I don't know if any of these cases are connected. The Felix Stowe, Burbank, Illinois, and Germany. As each seems to have their own kind of thing going on. The Felix Stowe case seems more like a, a typical alien abduction kind of event. There was a sighting of a UFO, a type, there was a type of telepathic communication, and there was an encounter with a being that kind of resembled a gray, except that this one was kind of cloaked in fire. The witness involved was also injured during the encounter. During the encounter. The Burbank case sounds more like a, I don't know, like a winged flying humanoid, uh, like um, a type of uh, angel or maybe a demon or something like that. That's what, from the description, that's what it sounds like. Um, it had wings, it flew about, and um, given the description of the witnesses, it sounded like it almost like it, uh, it was uh, taking great joy. It was like it had just been freed from a cage or something like that, the way it it was seen dancing about on top of the roofs, uh, uh, the roof of the houses, and uh, uh, on top of the train. It just seemed like it was having a great time. So, I don't know. Um, the Illinois case uh, kind of, I don't know, reminds me of a like a ghost story, but uh, a really strange one. Like the ghost was able to take um, a like. The, sh uh, the form of fire or something it was able to uh, like like the human torch from the Fantastic Four comics or the, the movie um, it, it was able to ignite itself like turn it uh, make itself into a ball of fire and then fly about um, very strange and it, it kind of reminds me of like a ghost story um, the way it, uh, um, it the way they, they said it resembled a, an old man um, and he was wearing coveralls and a hat um I don't know, that doesn't sound like a, an alien, but it could be. I don't know. It's very strange. Maybe it's the same thing that they cited in Felix Stowe, or the, the witness cited in Felix Stowe. I don't know. Um, it's just a bunch of weird cases that I thought I'd share with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to say to everyone who contacted me, either through uh, the comments in my other videos or... Uh, privately, I want to say thank you to all of you guys. Some of you guys shared really personal stories with me, and it I, it really has helped me. Um, the last video was like a one-off. I just wanted to make that so I could have that there, like I said. And it's been uh, you guys have been uh, fantastic. All of you guys that have commented and stuff. I I left the comments off the video because I didn't want to deal with that that kind of um, negative, uh, you know, negative talk. I guess I didn't really want to deal with. The kind of people we all know them—they're on YouTube and they—they they go out of their way to mock people who are in pain and they think it's really—they uh, have great a great time doing it. They, but I didn't want to let them have—I didn't want to give them the satisfaction, so I decided to just turn the comments off um, and just let it sit there. And I didn't think I would get any kind of response from it, and uh, I, I did, and I and I, it was all positive, uh, all of it. So. I mean, thank my subscribers and stuff, but I, I just want to say thank you to all you guys who responded to me. It was, it was, it was uh, really nice, and it really made me feel good. And uh, thank you. And uh, anyways, so Halloween's around the corner, and uh, let's get back to uh, some uh, paranormal videos, um, some spooky stuff, and uh, let's have some fun. Anyways, thanks everyone.